Good Wednesday to you, everybody out there in VibeFortBend.com land. Glad to be talking to you from Hightower. By the way, I just saw someone and he, he scared me, so I'm just going to start over. Hi, everybody. Welcome to VibeFortBend.com coverage of Hightower Hurricanes baseball. I'm Roger Smith, and we got a big district game. It's a Wednesday night. We're playing baseball because this game was scheduled for Tuesday night. And, uh, well, the weather was good on Tuesday night, but there was so much rain left over that hardly anybody was able to play baseball. Ridgepoint was one that did get a game in. They beat Dulles, and we'll tell you about that as the night continues. But now we want to get you ready for High Tower against Lamar Consolidated. It's still in the first half of district play, basically. Both of these teams have played fewer than half of their district games, but this is going to be a critical game if you want to get into one of those top four spots and get into the playoffs, which, according to Renard Brown, the head coach of the Hightower Hurricanes, his team has not done since 2011. He's been the head coach for this, his sixth season, and we're going to talk to him in our Batter Up show, and we will also talk to Ryan Bodwine, the head coach of the Lamar Consolidated Mustangs. Our coverage is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome, by Archer Volkswagen, also by First Tire and Automotive with four great Fort Bend County locations, as well as the Needville Insurance Agency. I'm Roger Smith, and we'll be back with Ryan Bodwine when we continue on the Batter Up Show. This is VibeFortBend.com, just about 15 minutes away from High Tower against Lamar Consolidated. Glad you're with us. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Welcome to the Batter Up Show. We're in Mo City as the Hightower Hurricanes are hosting Lamar Consolidated in an important district game. And it's the first chance we've had to visit with Ryan Bodwine, the head coach of the Mustangs. And first of all, coach, is it an advantage for your team? Are you going to get to pitch somebody that you wouldn't otherwise get to because of the rain that postponed this game till tonight? Um. Not really. Um, our, our pitching rotation is, is set up pretty good right now. We've got um, a guy that we've really depended on, Zion Johnson, going today. Um, we kind of feel like he was our number one. Um, it does help, though, because uh, Jonathan Anders, who threw Friday night against Hightower, he is, again, able to throw. He had four days rest, so he's able to come in also if we need him. So we're, we feel pretty good where we are right now with our pitching. And I asked that question just because, I mean, I'm, I'm looking ahead at what game you have next and what game that Hightower has next. And you do have Willow Ridge, and that might be a game in which you have other members of your staff that you might choose as the starter for those games. Now, let's, let's talk about the game that you played earlier with Hightower. You got the victory, and what were the keys to winning that game, and what signs made you encouraged when you saw how your team performed? Um, first of all, Jonathan Anders um, went complete game, 13 strikeouts, um, gave up, I think it was uh, five walks and had three hits. Um, he really kept us in the game. Um, our bats, we were able to swing the bat. Um, we had nine hits that game. Uh, had some really good quality at bats, got runners on base where we were able to do stuff. And then on top of that, the defense. The defense really helped. Uh, we were able to, to get out of some situations that we were in some first and thirds. Um, and we, we were able to get some double plays. So we, uh, we really overall had a really good game. When you look at the playoff picture, you know, somebody's got to get in those top four spots and advance to the playoffs. It's not going to be easy, but I think about some of the football districts that we have, you know, Hightower is going to be moving up to 6A next year, but they've been playing in a, an absolutely brutal football district. How would you characterize the overall strength, top to bottom, of the district that you're competing in? Uh, it's good. It's good baseball. It really is. Uh, the schools that we have in the Lamar uh, 
school district and then Angleton and then the ones here that we have in the Fort Bend district. Um, there's some really good baseball teams. There really are. And, and any given day, anybody can win. That's what's good about it. And we feel pretty confident where we are right now um, in the standings and with our schedule going forward and what we have. We, have, we've, we feel pretty confident. All right. Well, it's great to talk to you, and I'm sure that I'll get a chance to talk to you again soon. You never know when we might be doing a game that involves your team as well as Folster, Foster, Kempner, one of those. And it's going to be a long season. Of course, we'll look in the last few, I guess, couple, three weeks of the season, we kind of look at which teams or which games give us the strongest playoff implications. So if, if a team is on the bubble, that, that's really compelling to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We would love to have you out to Mustang Baseball Field. All right. I, that's a good thing because I know exactly where it is. I won't have any trouble finding it because it's right there next to trailer. All right. That is Ryan Bodwine, the head coach of the Lamar Consolidated Mustangs. And we'll be back with the head coach of the High Tower Hurricanes, Raynard Brown, when we continue on VipeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back to the Batter Up Show. It's the High Tower Hurricanes in a very important district game against Lamar Consolidated. And it's a great opportunity to visit for the first time with Renard Brown, the head coach of the Hurricanes. Coach Brown, um, I know that you've been working hard to bring the Hurricanes to a point where they are contenders to get to the playoffs, and I think you've gotten them there. But it seems like there's been kind of a quick uptick in the number of wins that you've had this year. Am I right about that? Well, yeah, we, we played really well, um, especially early in the season, tournaments and stuff. We, we went down to tournaments. Uh, we played in the Aldine tournament, and we played in the uh, Westbury tournament. And uh, we just, we just, things just started clicking. I mean, we, we did great on in, in the field. We did great pitching and hit the ball when we needed to, ran, stole some bases here and there, and, and all that's kind of worked out for us. So we, we got off to a good start early on. One of the important things that you need, numbers are always good, and I, I can't help but believe that's okay. You can walk as you don't have to tiptoe. It's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> a very, very polite young man. Uh, anyway, uh, Coach Brown, I know that it's critical at a school for a sport to be cool, to get the participation that you need to to really represent your school. And it cannot hurt that you have some great football athletes on your baseball team. Can you talk about the contribution, uh, the contributions of Jeremy Payne and also KJ Pinson, and and uh, the difference they've made coming out for baseball? Well, you know those two guys, those two kids are you know great kids, uh, and I've watched them play football. Um, you know, especially this past year when they went you know three, four rounds deep in the playoffs. KJ is an outstanding young man. Jeremy is definitely an outstanding young man. Both of those, both of those guys are. Great, great guys to have on a ba on any team, let alone baseball or football. It'd be great guys to have on any team. Great teammates, um, and, but they're also really good baseball players. And uh, and really, we can't we can't do what we want to do as far as trying to make a playoff run without those guys. So they really do. They're they're a big part of what we're trying to do. Now let's talk about this district game you have tonight. In your district, there are a lot of situations where you'll go home and home with the team. You know, sometimes it's kind of round robin play a team at your park and then you play everybody else before it comes back around and then you play at their park right. but the fact that last night's game was rained out and postponed till today that might mean they put Anders on the mound is that something you look forward to are you hoping they don't do that how do you look at it well, I mean, it really doesn't matter who they pitch. I mean, it's really about when, – when we talk about baseball, it's really about what we're trying to accomplish. Um, he pitched an outstanding game last last time over there. Um, but I'm sure if we had to face him this time, it would be – you know, probably would be a completely different thing, you know. Uh, and you take game, every game one game at a time. You really don't try to look back. You really don't try to look forward. You try to look at that day's game and try to prepare for that day's game. I don't know who they're going to pitch, but I think we're going to be ready to play, and that's the most important thing. So. And finally, as we move forward and you pursue that – that postseason bid. One thing that I've noticed about the, the football district that Hightower's been playing in is just an absolutely brutal district. So good. 
And would you say that the baseball talent in the district that you're trying to get into one of those top four spots is as tough? I know Peyto is not part of the mix, and, and that's probably a good thing. They have a great baseball team. But how do you see the picture and where your team stacks up in it? Well, I mean, if, if you're going to start talking about baseball in this district, it starts with Foster and Fulcher. They're, they're, they're probably the cream of the crop as far as this district is concerned. So if you're going to do anything playoff-wise, you're going to have to do. You're going to have to play pretty well against those two teams. Um, Foster, I've been playing against them since I was at Ball High. I was an assistant. I was a JV coach at Ball High. We've been playing them since I was there. So um, they, they have a really great pro program, great coach. Fulcher is kind of a new up-and-coming school, but, you know, you can put them on par with Foster as well. Um, so but really, you know, we're going to play these guys, and we, we're going to have to play up to par um, if we really want to, you know, like I say, make a playoff run. We're going to have to be able to compete with these guys like that, Foster and Fulcher, for sure. All right, that is Renard Brown, head coach of the Hurricanes, and you know we're going we're to see you again. And uh, I can't remember exactly which game I designated, but I know there's a, the next one that we'll do is uh, sometime within Kempner. the month of April. I think it's Kempner. Yeah, that's always that's probably right because when we can go Fort Bend ISD versus Fort Bend ISD, that's what we prefer to do. All right, thank you so much, Coach Brown, and good luck tonight against Lamar Consolidated. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, All right, Roger. We'll be back with the starting lineups here on VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County sports. All right, Roger. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X-Fi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. All right, everybody, it is 6.58 p.m., and guess what? They already started. I hate when they do that. It's a 7 o'clock game, and you missed the first out of the ball game. Dallas Turubiate, the third baseman for Lamar Consolidated, flying out to center field. So there's one out. That's good news for the Hightower Hurricanes. They have on the mound Braylon Kizzy. We'll tell you about him in a moment. But because they started early, we need to give you the lineups for Lamar Consolidated. Alberto Hernandez, their shortstop, stands in. And the first pitch to him is inside for a ball. Hernandez, a right-handed hitter against the left-hander Braylon Kizzy. Here's the 1-0 on the outside corner for a strike. After Hernandez, it's Esteban Laris batting third and playing first base for the Mustangs. Alejandro Ruales is their catcher and batting cleanup. Give you the rest of the lineup after this next pitch. 1-1 one, one from Kizzy, who pitches from the stretch all the time. That's a fly ball toward left field. Christian Tilford ranging forward, makes the catch with two hands, and quickly two away. So after the cleanup hitter, Alejandro Ruales, it's Jonathan Anders, the right fielder, who got the pitching victory when these two teams met on Friday night. Batting sixth and playing second base, it's Colin Garza. Zion Johnson is the pitcher, hitting for himself in the seventh spot for Lamar. Javon Thompson is the left fielder batting eighth, and Josh Cornejo, the center fielder, bats ninth. Now it's Esteban Laris, and I know how to say his name because I asked his dad just moments ago. He's the first baseman, and the first pitch from Kizzy is a little bit high for ball one. Laris has a two-game hit streak. As he brings the 1-0, the and it's fouled straight back, 1-1. One one. Laris scored on a pass ball for a walk-off win over Kempner in the Mustangs' 24-5A opener. He was also 2-4 for four with a double in a March 10th game against Stafford. And the count is 1-1. One one. As he comes set, comes home, and burns off the outside corner for a strike. Late-arriving crowd. 
here at Hightower, just within sight of Kenneth Hall Stadium. Pitch on the way, and it's upstairs. Count even two and two. Braylon Kizzy's dad is a police officer for Fort Bend ISD, and he's been wondering, when am I going to come out and broadcast Hightower baseball? Well, as Rod Stewart said, tonight's the night. 2-2, two -two, grounded foul on the left side. Lamar Consolidated wearing the navy blue jersey tops and the white pants. They're in the third base dugout in Hightower in their very handsome white home uniforms with a forest green H on the left side of the jersey in front. They're wearing their black caps with the green visors. 2-2 two -two on the way. Outside, and the count goes full on Esteban Lares. Alejandro Ruales would be next, should he get on. Wind seems to be blowing in, but not too hard from center field. And that is high for ball four. A two-out walk gets the Mustang started here in the top of the first. Here's the defense for Hightower. Richard Starnes is the catcher. Amir Sabahi at first base, Jeremy Payne at second. Shortstop is Angel Gutierrez. Dallas Torres at third base, Christian Tilford in left. Javon Thompson in center and K.J. Pinson in right field. Pinson, the quarterback on the high tower football team. Might have been good enough to win state if it hadn't been for Peyto. Both Peyto and high tower are moving up into class 6A competition next year. Here we go with Alejandro Ruales, the catcher. Right-handed hitter. Kizzy looks in long at Richard Starnes for the sign. Now makes a throw over to the left to first base. Where Sabahi applies the tag late. Ruales had a double and a triple in a March 11th win over Kempner. He was three for four in that game. Pitch on the way. And it's upstairs. Ball one. 66 degrees in beautiful Mo City, Texas. That's Missouri City for those of you who aren't locals. Kizzy brings the 1-0. Down and in for a ball. Two and nothing. So we got Dallas Turubiate and Alberto Hernandez on fly balls to start the first inning. But now he's given up the walk. And he's down two and nothing on Ruales. Here's the pitch. Down and in, and Ruales kind of has to move his feet out of the way. Lamar Consolidated has a pair of games against Willow Ridge after this series is over. Here's a pitch strike at the knees. Three and one as Braylon Kizzy works to Ruales. Having a little fun in the dugout. Here comes the three one. And that is in there at the knees for a strike. Ruales thought he had a walk and he started to throw the bat back toward the dugout. But he is not done with Kizzy. And Kizzy steps off. Kizzy, by the way, had a start and took the loss in a March 15th game against Angleton, but he started and won March 8th against Willow Ridge. There is a line drive toward left field and will get down in front of Christian Tilford, and it gets past him. And as a result, there's going to be runners at first and third. So Laris, call that a single for Ruales. And an error on the left fielder, Tilford. And so we've got runners first and third with two outs. And now Jonathan Anders, the right fielder. He's got a two-game hit streak. Two for five in that game against Hightower on Friday evening. Anders, a left-handed hitter. So it'll be lefty versus lefty. Lamar Consolidated trying to break out on top here after 
The first two men were retired in order. Anders ready. Here's the pitch to him. Strike at the belt. Looked like he was just expecting something else. Still some sunshine on the field. There's a throw over to first base, and diving back in is a courtesy runner. Ruales is not running for himself. That's Tylen Hill who's running for him. Nothing in one on Anders. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fisted foul back and to the left. Nothing in two. Kizzy has thrown in 11 and one-thirds innings coming into tonight's game. His ERA is 4.06 in district games. There goes Tylen Hill, breaks with the pitch, but is fouled straight back. He'll have to return, and the count is still nothing in two. So Kizzy in those district games has thrown 10 and a third innings. He averages 98.5 pitches in each of those last two starts. So he can go deep into the game if he needs to. Pitch to Anders is outside. Good eye by Jonathan. So the home plate umpire, the catcher, and the hitter are in shade. Everybody else is in sunshine for at least, at least a few more minutes. Anders ready. There goes Hill. Swung on and missed, and that'll do it. And Hightower flirted with disaster there, but they give up nothing here in the top of the first inning, and we'll, they'll come to bat here on VipeFortBend.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Here's the high tower batting order. They start with Javon Thompson in center field. Batting second, playing right field is KJ Penson. Jeremy Payne bats third and plays second base. Richard Starnes, the catcher, is the cleanup hitter. Amir Sabahi, the first baseman for the Hurricanes, bats fifth. Batting sixth, it's shortstop Angel Gutierrez. Braylon Kizzy, the pitcher, will bat seventh and hit for himself. Dallas Torres is the third baseman for the Hurricanes, and he bats eighth. Batting ninth, it is Christian Tilford the left fielder. Zion Johnson, the right-hander on the mound for the Lamar Consolidated Mustangs. Johnson took the loss in a game against Kempner on March 15th. He went five innings in that one, threw 80 pitches, 59% strikes, gave up only two hits, three runs, but only one was earned. So his ERA is pretty good. Strikeouts, three of them in that Kempner game, and he delivered three walks as well. And for the Mustangs, in the field, Alejandro Ruales is going to catch Zion Johnson. Esteban Laris at first base, Colin Garza at second. The shortstop is Alberto Hernandez, Dallas Turrubiate at third. In the outfield, in left field, is Javon Thompson, Josh Cornejo in center, and Jonathan Anders is in right field. As you heard their coach say in the batter up show Jonathan Anders even though he's not starting on the mound tonight could certainly come in because they got that extra night of rest now Javon Thompson first pitch to him is a strike at the letters now check that the home plate umpire ruled that the pitch was high so it's one and nothing 
Pitch on the way is outside, and that looked less like a strike than the first one, but it was called a strike. So it's one and one, and oh well, that's kind of the way it goes. In five district games, Javon Thompson hitting 389 with an on base percentage of 476. As Johnson delivers another pitch for a ball, it's two and one. Looks like Zion likes to work quickly. Here comes the 2 1, and that bounces in. So for Javon Thompson in his district games, he's got a homer, the only one on the team in the five district games, and a triple. Here's the 3 1. It's a ground ball toward third base and off the glove of Turubiate, but it will be a base hit because it was going to bounce over him anyway. So a single to left field to begin the offensive night for Hightower. Now K.J. Penson, the right fielder and the quarterback on the Hurricanes football team. And he has an offer from Texas A&M, I am told. And he really wants to play both football and baseball at A&M. But it's mainly a football scholarship, at least it is at this point. He's hitting 467 in district games. His on-base percentage, 556. Seven hits and 15 at-bats and four RBIs in those five district games. Right-handed hitter squares around to bunt, and there's a throw over to first base. And it looks like Zion Johnson's got a pretty good move. So be careful over there, Javon Thompson. Thompson, by the way, five for eight in stolen bases in the five district games. Pitch on the way. There he goes. It's a called strike on the outside corner. The throw is high and into center field, but Thompson kind of stumbles over second and rolls back to it. He would love to have gotten to third base, but nothing funny about this because he's rolling around. I don't think he's feeling too good. So I guess he might have started sliding a little bit too late. By the way, the field is in great shape, as you know. As soon as all the rain cleared out on Tuesday morning, we got great, great weather. And so the field is in outstanding shape, but I hope the same can be said of Javon Thompson. By the way, last night, as far as I know, only Ridgepoint was able to get its game in. They played the Dulles Vikings, and Ridgepoint won 8-0 eight and, eight to, to improve to 3-0 and oh in District 26A. Hunter Nichols pitched six innings, and Kellen Gratisar finished it up. They combined for a two-hit shutout, 18 strikeouts for Ridgepoint pitchers against Dulles, and Hunter Nichols had 17 of those. Home runs from Travis Vlasic and Justin Vossis. Each of those young men had two RBIs. Well, this is very alarming. Javon Thompson got himself a stolen base, but... They're kind of working on one of his ankles. I can't tell which one it is, but probably his right ankle. That's usually the lead foot when you slide into second base. All right, we're going to step aside, and we'll hope that Javon's going to be okay. No score here in the bottom of the first. High tower, nobody out, and a man at second. We'll be back. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? (laughs) I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Ooh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? 
Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig Internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. It's the left leg that is bother, uh, bothering Javon Thompson, who slid into second with a stolen base. He got a nice ovation from the crowd when they pulled him to his feet, but they've just now gotten him across the foul line on his way to the first base dugout. And he looks visibly upset, and you cannot blame him. He's having a really good year, and we certainly hope that this is not serious. Javon Thompson is going to exit the game. And we'll see who's going to go out and run for him. K.J. Penson, meanwhile, will continue his at bat in just a moment. Zion Johnson is throwing some warm-up tosses to his third baseman, Dallas Turrubiate. So that really would be a blow to the Hightower Hurricanes. By the way, Friday night, we'll have the game between Dulles and Elkins and come your way. And I was about to say, and I usually say 6.45 p.m., but I am so tired of these games that are supposed to start at 7, starting a few minutes before 7, and I'm still playing you my pregame interviews when the first guy steps into the batter's box. So I think the new start time for the countdown to or the batter-up show is going to be 6.40 all right, so Hightower needs to send somebody else out to second base to run. I'm not sure who that's going to be. Nobody's gone out there just yet. Okay, now I see somebody emerging from the dugout. Okay, hold on just a minute. Samuel Cantu is going to run at second base for Javon Thompson. Meanwhile, K.J. Penson, with a count of nothing and one, steps back into the right-handed batter's box. And the home plate umpire doing a very good job of making sure everybody knows what the count is. Pitch on the way. Another strike on the outside corner. It looks like Zion Johnson's really got some giddy up on his fastball. Cloudy night. First pitch temperature was 66 degrees, but I think that temperature is going to drop quickly. Johnson brings it, misses the outside corner. Good eye by Penson. I called him Kendron throughout the football season, but I think I'm going to call him KJ from now on. Johnson looks back at second. Contu moves back toward the bag. Now a pitch that is fouled back. Great job of spoiling it. Penson fought it off and fouled it back. He wears two red batting gloves. And you can see about two inches of bat handle underneath his hands. You just don't see too many kids that are willing to choke up these days. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss at the high heat and down goes Penson. One out for Jeremy Payne, the second baseman. You know, I think I said Javon Thompson was the only Hurricane who had hom homered in district play, and that's not correct. Jeremy Payne has a homer and a pair of doubles in hitting 533 in the five district games and an on-base percentage of 611 leads the team in runs with eight, hits with eight, and RBIs with seven. Right-handed hitter, Jeremy Payne. Pitch on the way. Fouls it straight back into the screen. Thought he had a fastball he could have done something with, and I think he's disappointed to have just fouled that one off. One of the best running backs in District 24-5A this past season. I would say he was the best, if not for a couple of guys from Peyto. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's painful, but they were just that good. Now Johnson steps back, and Contu goes back to the bag.
Nothing in one. The pitch to Payne is in there for a strike. A nice tailing fastball. Zion Johnson, even on the fastball, has some late movement right there at the end. And I'm sure if you're standing in the batter's box, it would be hissing as it goes by. Payne digs in. Here's the 0-2. Down and away and a throw down to third base. And they got Contu. He's out. Trying to steal. A lot of our consolidated fans made the trip and they're happy with their catcher's work right there. Alejandro Ruales. And so now bases are empty with two outs. And the count one and two on Payne. Johnson goes out of the windup now. Just missed the outside corner with that one, and it's two and two. So that caught stealing goes two to five for the second out. Here's a pitch that is down and away, and it's three and two on Jeremy Payne. It's a shame that the Hightower Hurricanes lost that base runner because you can have a lot of things happen on a three-two pitch with two away. That is high for a ball. So a two out base runner and now Richard Starnes for the Hurricanes, he's the catcher. There's a teacher at Hightower whose last name is Starnes who has a child at the school, but that's not Richard. His mom is Ms. Erickson who is on the staff here at Hightower. Right-handed hitter, another throw over to first base, and that was close. Payne got back in with a right hand. I mean, that was a little too close for comfort. Starnes has a triple and two doubles in his district games, hitting 454 on base percentage, 600. Four walks, and now they throw over and close, but again, no pickoff. I think you might have heard a fan say that Zion Johnson has a good move, and indeed he does. Payne diving back in again. There are some pitchers who would be happy if they could throw home as fast as Johnson throws his pickoff. Starn still waiting for his first pitch. Here it comes. And that is lashed toward third base, but still uh, speared. I made an error there. Lashed toward third base, but speared by Dallas to Rubiate. And that'll do it for the Hightower Hurricanes in the first inning. We'll go to the second. No score between the Mustangs and the Hurricanes. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth-generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot, Office Max. Care of business. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace and Sugarland for taking care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Roger Smith with you on VibeFortBend.com. No score after one inning between the Hightower Hurricanes and the Lamar Consolidated Mustangs. Bad news for Hightower, Javon Thompson after getting on base, stole second, but 
slid in awkwardly, hurt his left ankle, and he's left the ball game. Colin Garza will lead off for Lamar Consolidated, followed by Zion Johnson and Javon Thompson. We have a Javon Thompson who started but is injured and out of the game, and a Javon Thompson who starts in left field for Lamar Consolidated. Colin Garza, the hottest hitter for these Mustangs. He's got a three-game hit streak, and he is five for his last seven. He was one for one in stolen base attempts against Hightower on Friday. Drove in a run in that game. Right-handed hitting second baseman here at Hightower. The dimension's 325 feet down each of the lines. To the power alleys, it's 360 feet and 390 feet to straightaway center where the fence is a little bit taller for a stretch of about 30 yards. Kizzy brings the first pitch down and in for a ball. Colin Garza steps out and looks down at Ryan Boudouin. The head coach for the Mustangs. Kizzy comes set, always pitches from the stretch, brings it. And that's a lazy fly ball to center field. Moving over, it's not Javon Thompson, it is Contu who came in to replace him. And he makes the catch. One away. Three fly ball outs induced so far by Braylon Kizzy. Now Zion Johnson, let's see if he's as good a hitter as he is a pitcher. He's won for his last six and had an RBI in one of those last two games. Because he starts him with a high pitch. Ball one. Kizzy looks in as night begins to fall here at the Hurricanes ball field, and that pitch is downstairs, 2 and nothing, as Kizzy works to Zion Johnson. We'll have Dulles and Elkins for you on Friday night. We'll come to you with the batter-up show starting at 6.40. Here's the 2-0. Here's a strike at the knees. Nice late movement on that pitch as Kizzy brought it. It looked like it was going toward the middle of the plate and then took a little quick dart to the right in on the right-handed hitter. Here comes the 2-1. Johnson lets that one go by, and it's a called strike on the outside edge. Good idea to hit the inside corner, then go to the outside one. And it's 2-2. Two and two. Kizzy shakes off a sign from his catcher, Richard Starnes, and brings the 2-2 way upstairs. I think that one slipped out of his hand a bit. It might be a cool enough evening where the umpires will tell both head coaches that if your pitcher needs to step off the mound and blow on his hand or lick the fingers, that would be fine. Here's the 3-2. Swung on and missed. Two away on the second strikeout for Kizzy. Now Javon Thompson, the left fielder. Also a right-handed swinger, one for his last five. Slightly open stance from the right-handed box. Kizzy comes set and brings it. Strike on the inside corner. Last night, Ridge Point an 8 nothing win over Dulles. Seems like nobody else was able to get on their ball fields, which were still wet. There's a fly ball to right field. K.J. Penson tracking, and out goes the second baseman, Payne, and it squirts out of his glove. Oh, that's a shame. Kizzy almost had him a 1-2-3 inning, but Javon Thompson ends up at second base, and that's got to be an E4. And Josh Cornejo, the center fielder, steps up. One for his last six. Here we go, Josh. Come back. 
The ball wasn't in the air that long, and if it was, it would have been a little bit easier for Penson to maybe say, I've got it, because usually the the, infi- the outfielder coming in kind of has the decision on that one. First pitch swinging and a ground ball foul over to the on-deck circle on the left side. Nothing and one on Josh Cornejo. The Hurricanes have an opportunity to make the playoffs in baseball this year. And they haven't done that since 2011. Renard Brown, very optimistic about that. 0-1 to Cornejo, and that got him on the shoulder. He ducked, and it's lucky he has good reflexes. It's the first hit by pitch of the game, and now there are runners at first and second with two outs. Back to the top of the order. Dallas Turrubiate flied out to center field his first time. More good news at Hightower. The boys' soccer team is in the playoffs for the first time since 2010, and good luck to them in the first round, which is later this week. Kizzy brings it to Turrubiate. First pitch swinging, pop up and foul ground behind home plate. It is Starnes, and he's got it. So just like in the top of the first and the top of the second, there was some trouble for Hightower, but they get out of it. And we'll continue to the bottom of the second inning. No score between Lamar Consolidated and your Hightower Hurricanes. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Kempner Cougars are in action tonight, and we'll pass on their result when we get an opportunity. I just got a text from Coach Eric Folkert, and I have to say there aren't too many coaches who would text me while they're coaching a game, especially a district game. So thank you, Coach Folkerts. Later on this season, when Kempner beats Hightower, we'll bring you that one here on VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. For the Hurricanes in the second, they'll send up Amir Sabahi, the first baseman, then Angel Gutierrez and Braylon Kizzy will hit for himself. Amir Sabahi, very productive. In all games this year, he has 11 RBIs. And that's tied for third on the team as there have been several productive high tower hitters. 289 average for Sabahi, on base percentage of 400. And the first pitch from Zion Johnson is just high and a check swing on the part of Sabahi and a good move. Here comes the next one. Outside corner strike at the knees. One and one on Amir Sabahi. Zion Johnson likes to work quickly. Tall right-hander. Rocks and fires. Fought off. Spinning foul out of play on the right side. It's getting pretty chilly out here. I think it would be a good time to check the temperature. 1-1 pitch by Johnson. Just missed the outside corner. Good idea to put it right there. But it's 2-1. Temperature has dropped to 64 degrees. It's supposed to get into the high 40s tonight. Swing and a foul ball out of play, but this one travels a lot farther. Lands on the football practice field over there. Johnson shakes off two signs. Brings the pitch. 
And that would have been a ball, but it is fouled out of play off to the right again. So you can tell what kind of heat Zion Johnson is putting on the baseball. Sabahi is a very good contact hitter, and yet when he fouls it off, it goes off to the right. Here's another one, and he fights that one off as well. Sabahi doing a great job, and he's fouling off so many baseballs that the home plate umpire looks over at the dugout and says, send some more in. There's still just the gentlest breeze coming in from center field, but it shouldn't affect too much. Johnson getting his grip, winds and brings it. Smashed towards shortstop, Alberto Hernandez backhands it and makes a strong throw across to Esteban Leris. That goes 6-3, and it's the first out. Now Angel Gutierrez. Angel's killing it. 455 batting average in all his games this year, and his OPS, that's on-base percentage plus slugging. He's first on the team with 1.238. 15 hits in 33 at-bats, and he's drawn 10 walks. That's why his on-base percentage is 571. Swings at the first pitch, and it's a dribbler foul back behind home plate. Left-handed hitting Gutierrez, getting his first look at Zion Johnson. Who brings it? Tailing fastball misses away. It's one and one, and I've got to pay close attention. I can't lean on the scoreboard because it's not functioning right now. Gutierrez swings and misses, and it's one and two. Here's the pitch. And it's a ground ball foul past third to Rubiate, goes after it and just kind of waves at it. We have ample foul territory all the way down both lines here at Hightower. Gutierrez leans back a little bit in his batting stance. Now ready and fights one off, goes foul back into our left. Angel Gutierrez is one of those players that's been active in baseball since he was about five. Hitting the ball off a tee. Hanging in there and this at bat against the hard throwing Zion Johnson. Roxanne delivers. Breaking ball just missed. It was a beauty and a cringe on the face of Zion Johnson. He really thought he had a called strike three. And I think you can hear some groans and other noises from the Lamar Consolidated fans. Two and two the count. Here's the pitch. Downstairs, or no, there's no way that was at the knees, it was low, but it's a called strike three. Two outs, base is empty on the second strikeout for Zion Johnson. Now Braylon Kizzy, he's not just a pitcher. Left-handed hitter looks over at the dugout. And now they throw a couple of baseballs in from the dugout. Kizzy hitting 313 on the season. He's a free swinger, doesn't like to walk. He has hit a home run this year. And Johnson starts him with a fastball and he swings. And look out over there near Hobson Fieldhouse. Kizzy has a double in his district games. Slightly open stance. Johnson brings it. That is down and in. Just missed the toenails of Braylon Kizzy. His dad's been talking to me for a good two years to say cover high tower. Well, they have certainly earned it coming into this game with a record of 11-2-1. 
Down and away with the pitch to Kizzy. And coming out of the dugout to run it down is Dallas Torres, who's waiting to bat next. With the non-functioning scoreboard, I hope the umpire will give us hand signals more often. Here's a pitch that's high, and the count now three and two. Johnson ready, brings it, up and away, two out walk. Second walk issued by Zion Johnson. Now Dallas Torres. So we've got two third basemen whose first name is Dallas. Dallas to Rubiate for Lamar Consolidated. And Dallas Torres for your Hightower Hurricanes. Both young men are too young to have been named after Dallas Keuchel. And we have a courtesy runner down there at first base. Get an ID on him quick as I can. I think it's Ethan Brown. Now Dallas Torres ready. See if Ethan Brown wants to steal a base. Here's the pitch. Fouled straight back into the chain link backstop. And it's nothing and one on Torres. Torres taps the outside part of the plate. He's near the front of the right-handed batter's box. Nothing and one. Here's the pitch. Up and in, and I think it hit him. It did. Grazed his sleeve. So no pain, but Torres is going to first base. And that's the first hit-by-pitch of the evening for Zion Johnson, but two hit-by-pitches in the game, one for each team. Now Christian Tilford. A double in his district outings, hitting 375 in those five district games. Right-handed swinger. Two runners on with two outs. Zion Johnson starts him with a fastball strike on the outside corner. We continue with cool temperatures dropping all the time, but no wind. Tilford ready. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, and he swung over it. Nothing in two. Johnson looks in at his catcher, Ruales. Brings it. Swung on and just got a piece, and it got underneath Ruales and back to the backstop. Got about a silly millimeter of the baseball, and he's still alive. Johnson waits a moment as we have a player come out of the high tower dugout and retrieve the ball. Here comes the 0-2. Swung on and missed. Third strikeout of the game for Zion Johnson for Hightower in the second inning. No runs on no hits, no errors, and two men left on base. We'll proceed to the third. No score between the Lamar Consolidated Mustangs and your Hightower Hurricanes. We'll be back on your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports, VipeFortBend.com. Hey, Becky G., can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. 
Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Welcome back. We go to the third. No score between Lamar Consolidated and your high tower Hurricanes. Crucial district game for both teams. High tower is 11-2-1 overall. Alberto Hernandez will lead it off for Lamar Consolidated. Flied out to left field his first time. Braylon Kizzy checking with his infielders. And he always pitches from the stretch. Base runners or not. Brings the first pitch. Swung on and a miss. Big rip by Hernandez. Roxanne fires, and there's a fly ball toward left. Ranging back is Tilford. He's under it, and it is out of here. He was looking up. It looked like he was expecting the ball to settle into his glove, and it just kept on going. And Alberto Hernandez has belted one out of here, and we got something other than a zero on the scoreboard right now. That just kind of snuck out of here. I don't think you heard a rising ovation on the part of the fans. They just thought it was going to be an ordinary fly ball, but evidently Alberto, 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 I'm getting a little cold here. Alberto Hernandez got all of it. Now the first pitch to Esteban Leris. Ball inside. He walked in the first inning. And there's no wind right now. I mean, none. So that was not a wind-aided homer by Alberto Hernandez. Second pitch inside, two and nothing. Kizzy comes set, now comes home with it. And a little bit low for a ball. Gets slightly underneath Richard Starnes. Kizzy leans in, gets the sign. Comes set at the sternum and brings a strike on the outside corner. One to nothing. Lamar consolidated on the homer by Hernandez to start off this top of the third. Next pitch. And it's a ground ball to third. Backhanded by Torres. Throws across right on target. Oh, that's a beauty of a play by Dallas Torres. Score it five to three, and there's one out. By the way, I want to give the heartfelt condolences of everybody at Vipe to the Hightower family. They lost a senior student, Carl Spivey, died in a car accident on Olympia Parkway. And there was a special ceremony where people came out to mourn his loss and honor his memory. Carl Spivey lost all too soon. So you have our sympathy, you have our prayers to everybody who is heartbroken over having to say goodbye to Carl Spivey so young. Now Alejandro Ruales took the first pitch for a ball and the second one also a ball. Kizzy steps to the back of the mound, the now 
The left-hander steps back on top of the mound, comes set. Brings the 2-0. There's a strike on the outside corner. Ruales reached on an error in the first. Hightower lost 4-1 on Friday night to these same Mustangs. Here's the 2-1. And just missed the strike zone. In fact, just missed Ruales. The count's now 3-1. A little bit of an unusual way of scheduling district baseball games in District 24-5A as the 3-1 is lined a single into right field. Great piece of hitting by Ruales. He just went the other way with a 3-1 pitch. Just out of the reach of Jeremy Payne as he made a dive for the baseball. And so we have one out, a run already in. And Ruales is going to be at first base with his base hit. Well, he won't be there for long because we have a pinch runner come in. And it's Tylen Hill. Now left-handed hitting Jonathan Anders. Struck out in the first, but he's been hitting very well. And the Hurricanes, uh, catcher Starnes and first baseman Amir Sabahi saying that K.J. Penson in right field needs to move back. First pitch is bunted in the air foul and actually goes over the screen. Not just straight back. Sometimes you'll see a bunt attempt fouled straight back and over the screen, but not too often you see it fouled kind of maybe a third of the way down the first baseline and get out of play. Nothing and one on Anders. With a runner at first. See if he'll square around to bunt again. Kizzy comes set. No, he swings and misses at the inside fastball. It's nothing and two. Anders trying to extend his hit streak to three games. Steps out of the box. Now back in. Kizzy looks over at first. Here's the 0-2, just missed outside. Hill taking a cautious lead, now stretching it out a little bit. Here's the 1-2, swung on and popped up on the infield. Kizzy calling for it, he's got it right in front of the mound. And now there are two away. Colin Garza stands in, flight out to center field in his first trip to the plate. So Ruales got the one out single. He's still at first base, or Tylen Hill is running for him. Garza looks down at Ryan Bodwine in the third base box, gets the sign. Ready for the first pitch, and he lines it into center field, and it's going to drop in front of Cantu, and it gets past him. Here comes Tylen Hill around third. He's going to score the second run. The throw is cut off. That's unfortunate. Garza, let's give him a double out of this, and it was one of those where Cantu, the less experienced center fielder, decided to go for the catch rather than keep it in front of him. And that results in the second run scoring as Tylen Hill comes racing home. He was trying to make one of those Ron Swoboda catches. It just didn't work out. Still two out. That's an RBI for Garza. Now Zion Johnson trying to pad the lead that he now enjoys. Two to nothing. Pitch on the way, up and in, just missed his upper left sleeve. And it's one and nothing. Zion Johnson struck out his first time. Here's the 1-0, that's going to center field. Contu backs up a step, makes the catch, 
And that will do it for Lamar Consolidated here in the top of the third, but they pick up a couple of runs. And Hightower will try to answer when we return on VipeFortBend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. First Tire and Auto. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back. Lamar Consolidated is on top now by a score of 2 to nothing. Zion Johnson... Goes back out there, and now he can work with a lead. Hightower has the top of the order coming up, but it is Samuel Cantu and not Javon Thompson leading off because Thompson stole second base in the first inning and injured his left ankle. He'll, he, Cantu, will be followed by K.J. Penson and Jeremy Payne. I'm Roger Smith with you, the first of two games we're bringing you this week. On Friday night, we'll have Dulles and Elkins. Let's go defense. All right, I think I've been misidentifying the hitter for Hightower. It's not Cantu. All right, let me fix that. It is Charles Evans. Very sorry to Charles Evans, his family, his friends, his girlfriend. All of his teachers, Charles Evans, not Samuel Cantu. Oops. 0-1 pitch on the outside corner, nothing and two to Evans. Dang it. Hate when I make such an egregious error. Here's the 0-2. Down and away. It would be really cool if Evans' dad's name was James Evans, Jr. Good times. Outside corner strike, you got to be kidding me. You got to be dry shaving me. There's no way that was in the strike zone. But it's a looking strikeout for Evans in his first plate appearance. One out for Hightower here in the bottom of the third. Now K.J. Penson, a strikeout victim his first time as a night bird flies through the outfield, swings at the first pitch, comes up empty, nothing in one. Johnson rubbing up the baseball. He does not wear the undershirt on a cool night like this. And by the way, the temperature has dropped to 63. Squares around a bunt, withdraws the bat, and the pitch is high. It's one and one. Johnson taking a little bit more time now between pitches. And that one is down and away. Two and one. And maybe just to break up Johnson's rhythm a little bit. We have the batter step out. Now Penson is back in there, ready for a 2-1. Johnson brings it. And that tails inside. It's a ball to make it three and one. K. 
K.J. Pinson has an offer from Texas A&M. I imagine he'll take it, but it's not official. 3-1 pitch is on the outside corner. The count goes full. He wants to play football and baseball at A&M. They'll talk about it. Johnson shakes off the sign, now nods at his catcher, Ruales. Brings the 3-2. Upstairs for ball four. Now Jeremy Payne comes up. And I think uh, that's his fan club over there. One of those voices is male, believe it or not. It's a falsetto. I made them laugh. <laughs> He's a big fella, too. You know, I have this theory about singers. I don't know if I'll have time to share it tonight, but I think you'll find it interesting. Jeremy Payne digs in, looks at the first pitch, misses outside. It's one and nothing. Payne walked his first time. Johnson looks over at first base. Brings the 1-0. Runner goes. Pitches low for a ball, and the throw will not get him. Nice jump on the part of Penson, and he goes into second base. So that means that in his district games, Jeremy Payne is 8 for 8 stealing bases. Uh, bases. I'm sorry, Penson. Ah, never mind. Penson's stealing. Penson just stole. He is now 6 of 8 stealing bases, and it's Payne in the batter's box. And the count is 2 and 0. Oh. All right. There goes Penson again. He's going to steal third, and he slides in easily. Now he's 7 for 9 stealing bases in his district games. Did I say Penson? I hope I did. And the count, meanwhile, goes to 2-1 and one to Payne as the pitch was a strike. And that pitch is down and away. It bounces off of Ruales' mitt, and Penson is going to have to stay at third base. But with the count of 3-1 and one, and just one out and a runner at third, Hightower trailing Two to nothing here in the bottom of the third. There's a lot of ways to get it done here. Cut that lead in half. Payne takes his time and looks down at Renard Brown, the head coach in the third base box. Johnson from the stretch brings the 3-1. It's outside. Second walk of the inning. And there are runners at the corners. The running game may be the spark that Hightower needs. And now Richard Starnes, who swings a pretty good bat, stands in. He was robbed of a base hit by the third baseman, Dallas Turrubiate, his first time up. Adjust the Velcro on the batting gloves. Adjust the belt buckle. Knocks some mud off the spikes. Johnson looks like he's a little tired of waiting. Now everybody's ready. Right-handed pitcher Zion Johnson bringing it to the right-handed hitting catcher Richard Starnes. Now the Shakespeare move. A lot of sound and fury signifying nothing as Johnson looks at third, looks back at first, does not throw. Starnes with a closed stance. Bat poised. There's a throw over to first base, and Payne is back in. First baseman Laris tagged him on top of the batting helmet, but his hand was already on the bag. Starnes asked for time, steps out for just a second and a half. Now he's back in there. Still waiting for the first pitch of this plate appearance. Here it comes. Swung on. It's a ground ball toward third to Rubiate. Goes to second for one. And now they're going to go back and they will. Pinson is back at third safe. 
They started to go to second with it. It was kind of a fake move. To Rubiate looked at second, faked the throw, tried to get Penson hung up between home and third, and everybody is safe. So that's going to be a fielder's choice for Starnes, and they'll pinch run for him. I believe that's Ethan Brown who's coming on to pinch run for him. No, it's Roberto De Lao Ruiz. Bases are loaded with one out in a 2-0 game. Hightower trying to catch up here. Out of the windup, Johnson brings it, and the curveball is inside to Amir Sabahi. 0 for 1 with a ground out to shortstop. Even though it's just the bottom of the third, this could be a pivotal moment right here. Johnson rocks in, brings the 1-0. Outside corner strike, and they're pretty generous. They, meaning he, the home plate umpire, generous with the outside corner as Johnson works to the right-handed hitters. It's one and one. Now he brings the next one. That was low, and you can tell the high tower fans, I don't think they're just looking through it with forest green glasses. That was low, and perhaps even outside. It's one and two. So Sabahi's gonna have to go in big time protect mode. Johnson rocks and fires the one, two. Swung on and missed, and there are two away. That's a big strikeout. Strikes one and two were a little questionable, and now Angel Gutierrez. 0 for 1 with a looking strikeout in his first plate appearance, and he really needs to come through here. Righty working to lefty. Lefty. Gutierrez. Looks at the first pitch, strike on the inside corner. Looking a little miffed at that call as he steps out and then back in. Here's the 0-1, downstairs, one and one. Now Ruales asks for a new baseball and the umpire gives it to the Lamar Consolidated catcher. That looked like a strike, but it was evidently a little bit outside to the left-handed hitter, Angel Gutierrez, and it's two and one. Confidence, confidence. Two to nothing, Mustangs on top, High Tower trying to draw even here. Here's a ground ball up the middle, it's the shortstop, Hernandez steps on the bag and finishes things off. That's disappointing for High Tower. For them, no runs. And they had no hits, no errors, and three men left on base. We'll continue to the top of the fourth. Lamar consolidated on top of Hightower, two to nothing. This is VipeFortBend.com. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 33122. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Welcome back, VibeFortBend.com. We'll start the top of the fourth inning. Lamar consolidated leading by a score of two to nothing, and they'll send up Javon Thompson, Josh Cornejo, then the top of the order, Dallas to Rubiate. And I want to say happy birthday to Robert K. Tots, a big high tower fan. All the best to you, and thanks for your encouraging words prior to this game. As we bring you a broadcast of high tower baseball, they are relevant this year and have an opportunity to reach the playoffs. 
Raylan Kizzy going out to the mound for his fourth inning of work for Hightower, trailing two to nothing. Hurricanes really missed an opportunity in the bottom of the third when they loaded the bases with one out. But they came up empty and kind of a generous strike zone for their starting pitcher, the Mustang starting pitcher, Zion Johnson. You hear those spikes on the aluminum bleachers? That's Tylen Hill who scored the first of the Lamar Consolidated runs. Javon Thompson reached on an error in his first plate appearance. The left-hander Braylon Kizzy looks in at his catcher Richard Starnes, comes set always from the stretch. Pitch on the outside corner for a strike at the letters. Javon Thompson won for his last six. Looks at one at the knees and just missed the outside corner. The flag in center field not moving at all. Here comes the 1-1. Swing and a miss. Thompson kind of came out of his shoes on that one. Comes up empty. Gizzy would like to finish him off here. He's really had no trouble with the first and second outs of the inning, but getting the third one was tough. Swing and a miss, and he gets the leadoff guy. I think you might have heard that sarcastic response from one of the Hightower fans. You know, if you say good call blue on a swinging strike, that's dripping with sarcasm. One away, and now the number nine hitter, Josh Cornejo. First pitch is a breaking ball, and it looked good. But it's ball one. That strikeout of Thompson was the third in the game for Kizzy. One another count on Cornejo. Sky high pop up behind second base. Angel Gutierrez calling for it. And he's got both feet on the outfield grass as he makes the catch. Two quick outs. Now Dallas to Rubiate. 0 for 2 with a fly out to center field and a foul pop up to the first baseman, Amir Sabahi. Lefty versus righty. Kizzy comes set, brings the pitch. And that is smashed down the left field line, but it's twisting into foul ground. Now we get a, need a towel to wipe up all the sarcasm on the right side of the stands. This inning brought to you by the bath towels of my pillow. All right, so there's a strike after that foul ball, and there's a hit by pitch, or was it? No, Dallas to Rubiate pulling a Harry Houdini act and somehow got out of the way of that pitch. And it's one and one. To Rubiate, a great last name, much more exciting than mine. Sounds like a menu item at BJ's Brew House. There's a pop foul. Over near the dugout and a nice long run by Sabahi and he can't make the catch. In fact, I think he had a fight with a little protective screen that the batting practice pitcher uses. If it hadn't been right there where it is, I think he might have made that catch. His hat came off and his shades, which he's still wearing even though it's dark. Tribute, no doubt, to all of a sudden I can't remember the musical artist's name. There's a curve ball that didn't curve and it stayed outside. It was a tempting pitch for Turubiate, but he laid off and it's two and two. Kizzy brings it. Curve ball high and the count goes full as he tries to get his first one, two, three inning of the evening. Hightower 3-2 and two in their five district games. The 11-2-1 overall coming in. 
3-2 pitch. Hot smash toward third. Dallas Torres up with it. Throw on target. Nice lean by Amir Sabahi to finish it off. And there it is, the 1-2-3 inning for Braylon Kizzy in the Hightower Hurricanes. We will go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Yeah, that's right, the bottom of the fourth inning. I was looking at the scoreboard. It says we're going to the bottom of the third, but it is the bottom of the fourth. Lamar Consolidated still leading it by a score of 2 to nothing. This is VibeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. The Hurricanes will send up the 7-8-9 hitters, Kizzy, Torres, and Tilford as they trail two to nothing to the Lamar Consolidated Mustangs. Hightower needs to win to maintain their winning record in District 24-5A. If the playoffs came along right now, if the season ended tonight, Hightower would be in, but it's gonna be a tight race all the way through. Braylon Kizzy, left-handed swinger, hits one out of play to the left. It is strike one as Zion Johnson is looking pretty impressive on the mound for Lamar Consolidated. Anders pitched for them and got the victory on Friday night over Hightower. Here's the 0-1. Inside corner strike and Kizzy didn't like that. But you have to be kind of, I don't know, tactful if you're the pitcher standing in there hitting. You don't want to get on the ump's bad side. It's 0-2. Righty working to lefty. Kizzy digs in, here's the pitch. And he took a called strike, three at the knees, and the ball rattled around. Ruales picked it up and tagged Kizzy just in case. And there's one out. Now Dallas Torres hit by a pitch his first time. That strikeout of Kizzy was the fifth for Johnson. Torres looks at the first pitch strike on the outside corner. Torres did not get into the game on Friday night. Swings at that pitch and fouls it back into the right. And he's quickly down 0-2. Hi, you're a police officer disguised as a photographer. That pitch is high to Dallas Torres, and it's one and two. Johnson has looked very comfortable tonight for Lamar. Brings the one, two, and fouled straight back. Nice job of hanging in there by Torres. And I think he kind of wants to break Johnson's rhythm a little bit, so he takes a little short walk outside the batter's box. Now he's back in there. Here comes the one-two. Breaking ball high, two and two. And another short walk by Dallas Torres. Come back. 
And now Torres got tired of waiting for Johnson to get into his motion, and he asked for time, steps out. Infield shifted sharply to the right for Torres. Pitch on the way, check swing in the dirt. It's a swinging strike, and they have to throw down to first to complete the putout. That is the seventh strikeout of the night for Johnson, who's really starting to get into a rhythm. And now with the bases empty and two away, it's Christian Tilford, the strikeout victim in inning number two. When you have someone pitching like Johnson is tonight, it gets late early around here. First pitch swinging, fouled into the darkness on the right side, nothing in one on Christian Tilford. And swings at the next one. That will also go out, go out of play on the right side. I misspoke uh, when I said that Kizzy didn't play in the last game. He did. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and just getting a little nick on the bat was Christian Tilford. He's still up there. Now they need new baseballs. Cool night here in Missouri City, and we know we're going to have those nice warm baseball nights, but none of them yet. And I think I speak on behalf of the entire Texas high school baseball fandom population, coaches, players, that last Friday night, you know, I guess it would have been 12 nights ago, that was the worst high school baseball weather we've ever experienced. It was absolutely awful. 40 degrees, howling wind. I was at Dulles. It was awful. But we survived. 0-2, oh, a foul tip again. Tilford hanging in there. Two to nothing. Lamar consolidated on top of High Tower as the Hurricanes bat in the bottom of the fourth. Base is empty. Two outs for Tilford. Johnson shakes off a sign. Now gets the one he want from Ruales. Curve ball away. Good eye on the part of Tilford, and it's one and two. Here we are on Hurricane Lane, but not much wind. Swing and a miss. And Johnson strikes out the side. We'll be back with the top of the fifth inning. Lamar consolidated, still on top of the Hurricanes by a score of two to nothing. We'll continue on VibeFortBend.com. Hey, Becky G. Can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Ooh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your Internet do that? Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig Internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local, hometown, trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and 9 auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. 
We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Fans, do what I did. You do not even have to leave your house to save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on your home and car insurance by checking out the Needville Insurance Agency. Bradley Stavenaugh and his team will shop dozens of carriers and they will get you the very best premium on your car and home insurance. So go to needvilleinsurance.com or call them at 979-793-7411. And they will save you money. I can promise you that. I am a customer, and I can say that with conviction. Well, Braylon Kizzy, the left-hander for Hightower, going out there for the fifth inning. And he's pitched great. He's only given up three hits and the two runs, but unfortunately for him and the Hurricanes, Zion Johnson of Lamar Consolidated so far has pitched better, giving up only one hit. The first pitch by Kizzy here in the top of the fifth to Alberto Hernandez is a ball outside. Bad luck for the Hurricanes as Javon Thompson led off with a single to start the Hightower offensive evening, but then when he tried to steal second, he injured his left ankle and left ankle and left the game. Evans has replaced him in center field. The second pitch to Hernandez, also a ball from Kizzy as lefty works to righty. Pitch on the way. That's Hall high and it's three and nothing. We'll have Dulles and Elkins for you on Friday night. Batter up show starts at 640. Pitch on the way. That's a strike. Kizzy, whose dad is a police officer for Fort Bend ISD. His dad is very proud of him. He's been letting me know for a long time. There's a high fly ball to center field. It's Evans coming in. He's the one who replaced Javon Thompson, and he hauls that one in for the first out. Kizzy has induced a lot of fly balls tonight. Esteban Laris comes up, walked in the first, and hit a ground ball out in the third. Right-handed hitting first baseman for the Mustangs. Kizzy's first pitch, first pitch swinging, ground ball to Gutierrez, charging, wrong foot's the throw, and a nice stretch by Sabahi, who didn't really need to, but it was a beautiful stretch. Got him by about three steps. Score that 6-3. And Kizzy will go for his second consecutive 1-2-3 inning as he faces Alejandro Ruales. Reached on an error. And he singled and came around to score in the third. Here's the pitch. Straight back. By the way, when Hernandez came up, I think I neglected to mention that he hit a homer. So he's one for three. You know, that's pretty significant. Two flyouts and a homer for Hernandez as his team leads two to nothing. Ruales ready, takes a pitch down and in. And the count one and one. We'll have the game between Hightower and Kempner. I frankly cannot remember whether it's the one that's here or the one that's at Kempner. The one one pitch is outside and it's now two and one on the Lamar consolidated catcher Alejandro Ruales. And I wasn't precise when I said he scored a run in the third because that was actually Tylen Hill, the courtesy runner, who came in for the catcher. There's a pitch on the outside corner. Count now even two and two. Kizzy from the stretch always. Brings the 2-2. Two -two. That is a line drive toward left field, and it's going to one-hop in front of Christian Tilford. 
So it has been tough to get those one, two, three innings. In fact, Kizzy has only pulled off one of those. That's the fourth hit of the game for Lamar Consolidated. And they'll bring in Tylen Hill to run for Ruales. And now it'll be Jonathan Anders. Look out for this guy. He's due. Two-game hit streak, but he's 0 for 2 tonight. That must be Anders' mom with the video. Lefty versus lefty. Two outs, top of the fifth. Lamar consolidated on top, 2 to nothing, and the pitch is high for a ball. Anders with a stance that's neither open nor closed. Swings and misses, and it's one and one. Kizzy had retired six straight before giving up that single to Ruales. Anders looks at a pitch high, and it's two and one. If he can reach, Colin Garza will be next. Big opportunity for Hightower. They really need the win tonight. Three and two in district games coming in. Foul ball back into the darkness over near Hobson Fieldhouse. And the count is two and two. Anders with the white batting gloves and the white New Balance shoes, the kind that my kids used to make fun of me for wearing. But they're American made, dang it. Pitch is high, three and two, and a stolen base. Tylen Hill gets in, barely. He's at second base. Runner in scoring position for Anders now as the count goes to three and two. So Tylen Hill represents a third run for Lamar Consolidated. It could be a very big run. And outside for ball four. There are runners at first and second. I believe that's the first walk for Kizzy. And now we're going to have a mound conference. Coach Renard Brown is going to go out there and talk it over. I, he just has that walk that tells me he hasn't decided if he's going to replace Kizzy or not. Now I don't think he's going to because he's not reaching for the baseball. Hightower trailing two to nothing, and they want to keep it right there and not let it get any worse than that when they come up in the bottom of the fifth. And just in case you're wondering who's coming up, It'll be the top of the order, but the top of the order includes Evans, not Javon Thompson. Thompson injured his left ankle, sliding into second on a steal in the first inning. Then after Evans, it'll be Penson and Payne. But first things first for the Hurricanes, they want to keep the Mustangs from getting on the board anymore. And now it's Colin Garza. One for two with a double, drove home a run. In his last appearance, swings at the first pitch, fly ball to Evans in center. He's tracking. He's got it. So one pitch, and that takes care of everything. So for Lamar Consolidated, no runs on, let's see, one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. We'll proceed to the bottom of the fifth. Hightower needs some runs, trailing Lamar Consolidated two to nothing. We'll be back. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? 
Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. We are back, and the Hightower Hurricanes going to take another crack at it. Evans to lead off, standing in against Zion Johnson, who's been just about untouchable, and laying down a bunt. And it is a fair ball, and the ball is dropped by the first baseman, and safe! Dallas Turrubiate, the third baseman, crashed in. He jumped on the baseball, made a nice throw to first base. It was just a little bit high, but it squirted out of, squirted out of Laris's glove. And now Ryan Bodwine, the head coach for the Mustangs, is going to come out and argue. But that's going to be an E3, and it enables the Hurricanes to get something going here. I don't think I have any stolen base numbers on Evans, just in case you're wondering. Will they send him? All right, so the call stands. So you got Evans at first base. He laid down the bunt. And it was a beautiful bunt, and Turubiate had to go a long, long way to get to the ball. And he made a throw on time and just a tad high, so certainly not a throwing error. And now it is K.J. Pinson. Johnson looking at Evans, now looks toward home plate and steps off. Two runs on four hits for Lamar Consolidated. Hightower's been shut out on one hit and a throw over. The pickoff throw is close. Evans dives back in safely. Laris would love to put a tag on him and erase him from the base paths. Evans with a short lead. Johnson brings it. Penson lays off, and it's in the dirt for a ball. And the ball got out of the catcher, Ruales's mitt. And I think time had been called, and Evans was not going to go anyway. One and nothing the count on Penson. Walked in the third and stole second, then stole third but they could not get him home. They left three on in that third inning. Penson digs in, righty to righty. Looks at the next pitch and it's outside for ball two. Two and nothing on Johnson. So if you're thinking about who might Lamar Consolidated bring in if they do make a pitching change, more than likely it would be the right fielder, Jonathan Anders. 2-0 to Pinson. Outside, and it gets past Ruales. Evans takes on for second, takes off for second, and gets there easily. So let's call that a wild pitch. So now you have a run in scoring position. Yeah. 
And speaking of that, Jeremy Payne, or Pinson rather, has an average of 400 when there is a runner in scoring position. So here we go. 3-0 the count. Taken all the way. It's ball four high. So now runners at first and second. And Jeremy Payne, a good guy to have coming up there because with his speed, very unlikely that Lamar Consolidated could turn a double play. Are you Jeremy's little sister? Yeah, isn't that sweet? He, he kind of turned around and looked like he was a little embarrassed, but that's okay. It's still sweet. Okay. Runners first and second. Nobody out. First pitch swinging and swing and a miss. Payne down, nothing in one. He's walked twice. He's the go-ahead run. 0-1 pitch. Missed the inside corner and the count's even one and one. Hightower got a hit to start the game from Javon Thompson. Hasn't had one since. Here's the 1-1. Fisted foul. Ouch. Jeremy kind of shaking the, the bees out of his hand there. And it's 1-2. and two. Richard Starnes waits to bat next for the Hurricanes. Zion Johnson leaning in. Home plate umpire says, go ahead, young man. Here's the one-two. Payne swings and misses, and down he goes for the first out. Zion Johnson still throwing smoke. Richard Starnes needs to come through here. He's 0 for 2, but he hit the ball hard his first time, lined out to the third baseman, Dallas to Rubiate, and reached on a fielder's choice in the third. Johnson looks back at second. Evans takes his lead. Pitch high for a ball. <laughs> Starnes does not have a homer this year, but he does lead the team in RBIs with 14. Johnson comes set. Now a throw over to first base, a fake throw actually. Nothing doing. Everything is uh, okay. Starnes, by the way, hits 533 with runners in scoring position. I hear opportunity knocking right here. One and nothing the count. Starnes digs in. Righty working to righty. Pitch on the way. Outside, two and nothing. Evans put down a bunt, reached on an error as the ball came out of the first baseman Laris's glove. Then Penson walked. Runners first and second. Payne struck out, and Starnes now steps out with the 2-0 and count. Temperature moving down towards 60. No wind. Here's the pitch. That's a fly ball towards center field. Ranging back, it's Cornejo. And it's the right fielder, Anderson, Anderson, taking over. Anders, rather. And the runners can't move. It was too shallow. Now it's up to Amir Sabahi. 0 for 2 tonight. But that could all be forgotten with a big hit right here. Outfielders. Playing him shallow. And now the infield umpire is asking for time. I'm not really sure what it's about. And Evans. Evans is going back to second base. Um, I don't know what that was about. But there are still runners at first and second. Now two outs for Sabahi. This is important. Takes the first pitch, out outside corner strike. Sabahi hits 500 with runners in scoring position. 
one on the way. And it's a foul ball. Little check swing, got a piece of it. Squirted out of Ruales's mitt. And it's nothing in two. Very rarely tonight has Zion Johnson gotten behind the hitters. So he's had them on the defensive. Here's the 0-2. And it's up the middle. Ground ball. Will it get through? It's going to be everybody safe. And coming around third is Evans. He's going to score. That's an infield single. I call it an infield single because Garza, the second baseman, dived for it. It went off the webbing of his glove. He made a, a superior effort, but he could only just keep it from going deep into the outfield. Now Ryan Boudouin comes out. He's going to talk to Zion Johnson. I wonder, will he make a pitching change here? So Hightower has cut the lead to 2-1 to one on a clutch single by Amir Sabahi, the second hit of the game for the Canes. And they still have a little something going. <laughs> Runners at first and second. Penson could not go farther than second on that play. And now it's Angel Gutierrez. Angel Gutierrez has been hot six for his last 14 and five RBIs in that span. Left-handed hitter. No home runs on the year. Johnson brings him the first pitch. It's a chopper towards second. Garza charges, gloves it, throws in time. So Hightower came so close to a second infield hit in that inning, but score at 4-3 to retire the side. They do creep closer. We move to the top of the sixth. Lamar consolidated, leading 2-1 to one over Hightower. This is VibeFortBend.com. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X-Fi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Well, this is one of those character building nights for the Hightower Hurricanes. Nothing is coming easy tonight against Zion Johnson of Lamar Consolidated, but still they have a shot. They're down two to one. As in the top of the sixth inning, it'll be Zion Johnson, Javon Thompson, and Josh Cornejo for the Mustangs. Braylon Kizzy, the left-hander, still out there. 
So he's averaged 98.5 pitches for his last two starts, and they'll go deep into the game with him. And the first pitch, outside corner strike to Zion Johnson, who is 0 for 2. Kizzy struck him out in the second inning. Roxon brings the 0-1, tailing fastball away. So Kizzy has the knuckle curve and the fastball. That's what I'm told is his repertoire. Foul ball, fisted, out of play to our right. The count nothing and two on Zion Johnson. He's built kind of like Kyle Tucker. Not real muscle bound, but long muscles. Here's the one, two. Fisted toward third base. Dallas Torres charges on two hops, throws, and in time, Sabahi, a nice stretch. Earlier, Sabahi stretched when he really didn't need to, but that time he needed to and got Johnson by half a step. Nice arm over there by Dallas Torres. One away and the base is empty for Javon Thompson. 0 for 2, reached on an error in the second. And a swinging strikeout in the fourth. Javon, right-handed swinger against the lefty Kizzy. Kizzy rocks in, brings it. First pitch swinging, fouled back into the screen. Well, the one thing we can say about temperatures that aren't quite as warm as we'd like, at least they tend to keep the mosquitoes away. Here's the 0-1. Ground ball back to Kizzy on one hop. Nice backhand, throws over to his first baseman, Sabahi. And the first two men are out. Josh Cornejo, the number nine hitter in the Lamar Consolidated Order, will come up. Now it's a party. Coach Cornelius Anthony has entered the stands. He's the head football coach and boys campus athletic coordinator. He's got a personalized backpack with a couple of, it's made out of football material. That's cool. First pitch swinging. And Cornejo comes up empty on the high strike. Nothing in one. He was hit by a pitch in the second and popped up in the fourth. Here's the 0-1. Outside for a ball. Hightower squeezed out a run in the bottom of the fifth inning. So they are within 2-1. to one. And they will get the top of the order back to the plate because the seven, eight, nine hitters are due in the bottom of this inning, the sixth. Cornejo looks at a pitch downstairs. It's in the dirt. Two and one. Kizzy not looking fatigued whatsoever, still bringing it. Here's the two one. Inside and it's three to one. You don't want to walk the number nine hitter. Here's the pitch. Oh, that looked good. And the catcher, Starnes, comes out of his crouch and spins around a couple of times. That's, you know, protocol-wise, you don't want to do that. But, ah, uh, sure looked good. So now to the top of the order we go to Rubiate. And Kizzy has kept him under control. He's 0 for 3. We'll see if Cornejo wants to steal a base. Kizzy looks at him, brings the pitch home, took something off that one, and it's a swinging strike. Here's a pitch, and it's a tapper foul. 
in the grass near the on-deck circle on the left side. Cornejo digging in. He'd really like to help his team with an insurance run. Kizzy has other ideas. I'm sorry, Corne yeah, Cornejo would like to. He's the runner at first base. And it is Turrubiate in the batter's box who'd like to deliver. I say in the batter's box. He asked for time and stepped out. But he's down 0-2. Kizzy comes set, comes home. Ground ball towards short, backhanded by Gutierrez. Long throw on target, got him. Almost pulled Sabahi off the bag. Good thing he wears a size 12 and a half shoe. All right, so for Lamar consolidated, no runs on no hits, no errors. One man left on base, and we'll proceed to the bottom of the sixth. It's tough and tight. High tower down two to one. This is VibeFortBend.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. They take care of business every day and that helps us bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Throughout the school year, we have brought you at least two games a week. And in some cases, five, especially during the basketball season. Football, volleyball, girls and boys, basketball, as well as baseball and softball. And we haven't even started with the softball yet. Braylon Kizzy leads off against Zion Johnson, bottom of the sixth, high tower trailing two to one. After Kizzy, it's Dallas Torres and Christian Tilford. Here's the pitch from Zion Johnson, first pitch swinging. And coming up empty, it's nothing and one. Kizzy has walked and struck out. Johnson, Roxanne fires. Fly ball toward left field. Backing up on it. Easy play for Javon Thompson. He's got it. So it's just kind of a loud out to begin the bottom of the sixth. One away, and now Dallas Torres hit by a pitch and struck out. I'm not sure, but I saw a lady that I know as a police officer. I see her at a lot of basketball games. I think she's Officer Torres. I think Dallas is her son. Here's the first pitch to him. Just above the letters, and it's ball one from Zion Johnson. I was watching him during his warm-up tosses. It looked like he was taking a little bit off of some of those pitches, so maybe he's just trying to keep a little more in the tank. Swing and a miss on the 1-0 pitch, and it's one and one on Torres. Johnson patiently waiting. Now he begins his motion. The 1-1 pitch is an outside corner strike. Torres steps out. By the way, he's wearing those old school football type socks with the forest green and three black stripes, each trimmed in white. Here's the 1-2 and it's a line drive towards center. Cornejo backing up, it's over his head. 
There goes Torres. He's at second. He's going to keep on going. They're just now picking it up, and they get it in. He'll stop that third. Well, I guess what happened was Cornejo misjudged it. It got over his glove, and the Hurricanes have the tying run at third with only one away. And let's make that a triple. How about that? Dallas Torres. And now it is Coach Ryan Bodwine coming out of the dugout, and he might be ready to make a pitching change. There have not been that many hard-hit balls off of Zion Johnson. But Torres got that one right on the screws. And are we going to see Anders come in from right field? We just might. It looks like he is running toward the dugout to get a different mitt. So, yep, that is the case. Jonathan Anders will come on and pitch. We'll take a break and be back on VipeFortBend.com. The Hurricanes have something cooking in the bottom of the sixth, trailing 2-1. to one. Hey. Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Ooh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. All right, it is Jonathan Anders coming in out of right field to pitch. He's a left-hander. <laughs> Philip Salinas, by the way, goes out to right field to take over there. And the only numbers that we have on Anders is he got the win and the complete game, pitched seven innings through 114 pitches on Friday night against these Hurricanes. And if the game last night had been rained out, there's a possibility that he might not have been put on the mound. But Mother Nature has really helped out Lamar. He threw 58% strikes in that Friday night game, gave up only three hits, no earned runs, struck out 13, and walked five. And here we go with Christian Tilford. Squared around a bunt with a runner at third. Here's the pitch by Anders, and he pulled the bat back. I think he was going to swing away, but he takes the pitch low for a ball. The runner at third is Dallas Torres. He tripled, and that got the starting pitcher out of the game. Anders brings it. And is bunted back to the mound. Looks at home. Has to go to first. And the Hightower Hurricanes get Dallas Torres home with the sacrifice bunt by Christian Tilford. Great execution. Now there are two outs and the bases are empty, but Hightower has drawn even. This is one of those games where you just have to keep grinding, and the Hightower Hurricanes have. The bunt went right back to the pitcher, Anders and he realized that Torres was already motoring. He was about two-thirds of the way home. And the only thing he could do was throw out Tilford at first base, and now back to the top of the order. It's Evans 
First pitch swinging, strike one. So I don't believe that Evans was able to bat against Anders in that Friday night game. Second pitch is a strike at the knees. Looked like the knees maybe of Hank Hill's father. Anders takes his time. Now timeout called in the batter's box by Evans. So even if they retire Evans, you'd have the two, three, four hitters coming up for Hightower in the bottom of the seventh. That could be helpful. Here's the Anders pitch. And it's a little bouncer to the catcher, Ruales, but he was behind home plate when he fielded it. So it's just a foul ball. Still two strikes. Yep, this is one of those grinders games for sure. And Hightower's been grinding. That triple by Dallas Torres was only their third hit of the night. Anders brings the 0-2. And it's a slow hit ball towards second. Garza moves over towards second, makes a high throw, and it's late. And thanks to the hustle of Evans, it's an infield hit. The fourth hit of the night for these high tower hurricanes. Wait a minute. So the Lamar Consolidated people, wait a minute. They are saying, they are saying that Evans is out because he didn't touch first base. The home plate umpire has made the out call. Lamar Consolidated tagged him out after he had run past first. The home plate umpire, I can see by his body language, he is telling Evans that you made an effort to start going toward first base, and that's why he was tagged out after an infield hit. So that is a shame for Hightower, but they can take encouragement in the fact that they have tied the game 2-2. All right, we'll step aside and be back and set you up for the final inning, or is it? It's 2-2 two to two as we go to the 7th on VibeFortBend.com. Become a Vibe Insider today. Access breaking news in high school sports. Enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos, documentaries on programs in your area. It's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan. If you go for the yearly plan, it rounds out to just $1.99 a month. It costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe news throughout the entire year subscribe today what are you waiting for it's less than a cup of coffee a month become a vibe insider 2.99 a month 23.99 for the whole year hey it's vibe we will see you at the games archer volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you visit our sales department monday through saturday from 9 a.m to 9 p.m or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, we go to the top of the seventh, tied 2-2. Two to two. Lamar Consolidated will send up Alberto Hernandez, Esteban Leris, and Alejandro Ruales. And we can close the book on the starting pitcher, Zion Johnson. He gave up two hits, and he was responsible for the two runs, so he was on line for winning the game. But now that we are tied, he will get a no decision. Meanwhile, Braylon Kizzy, the left-hander, goes back out there. It is still his game. Left-hander gripping the baseball and just waiting for Alberto Hernandez to come into the batter's box. He's one for three with a homer that led off the third. Lefty working to righty. Hernandez looks at the first pitch and it's one of those knuckle curves and it's down for a ball. Hey, big, hey, big, big. 
Kizzy comes set, always pitching from the stretch. The 1-0 pitch is just above the letters, and the count is 2 and nothing. Esteban Laris waiting to bat next. Hernandez crowds the plate, looks at a 2-0, and it's way inside. It goes all the way to the backstop. And the third baseman, Dallas Torres, is going to come up there and talk to Kizzy for a moment. And whatever he needed to say to him, he was able to say from about 20 feet away. 3-0 the pitch. Will Hernandez have the green light? Curveball strike on the inside corner. Kizzy nods at his catcher, Starnes. Brings the 3-1. And it's a ground ball toward third. There's Torres again. Beautiful throw in the dirt. And it gets past the first baseman, Sabahi. And now all of a sudden, with nobody out, there's a runner at second. I said beautiful throw, and it's just because I was really expecting it. But that's an error, E5 throwing error on Dallas Torres. And so you have a runner at second. And now the dangerous Esteban Laris comes up. Although he is 0 for 2, did have a walk in the first. Bernard Brown standing out there and near the front of the dugout for Hightower, the head coach. Might be thinking about a pitching change. Hernandez takes a short lead off of second. And a bunt toward third. Torres charges. This is going to be trouble. Bare hands it throws. No, he has to eat it. Everybody's safe. That gets Hernandez over to third. And safe at first is Esteban Lares. It was a perfectly placed bunt. And now here comes Renard Brown out of the high tower dugout. He is taking the baseball from Braylon Kizzy, and Kizzy's night is done. All right, we'll step aside, tell you who the new pitcher is. When we return on VipeFortBend.com, 2-2, two two, and Lamar Consolidated is rallying here in the top of the seventh. Hey, Becky G., can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Right-hander Samuel Cantu is the new pitcher for the Hightower Hurricanes. He's made four appearances in district games thus far. He has no wins or losses, an ERA of 3.82 in those district games. Three and two-thirds innings, only two hits allowed, two runs allowed. Both of those earned. He struck out one and walked four. He comes in a tough situation. Runners at the corners with nobody out in a 2-2 game, top of the seventh. He's got a pretty good breaking ball, and he likes to come over the top with that one. <coughs> now his catcher, Starnes, is going to go out there and chat with him. Now the infielders come together. For last instructions to each other. <coughs> and I'm sure the infield will be drawn in tight and they'll come home with any ground ball that gives them any kind of opportunity to throw out that go-ahead run at the plate. Line drive now, line drive. See where you're going, Hernandez is the runner at third. He reached on an error. 
Then Esteban Laris bunted him from second to third and was safe himself, so it's an infield single on that bunt. And now Alejandro Ruales, right-handed hitting catcher, looking at Cantu. Righty versus righty. Cantu looks over at third base, brings the first pitch, and that is a fly ball toward left. Tilford back, it's over his head. That'll bring home the go-ahead run. Scoring is Hernandez, and a throw toward third, and out there. Beautiful job by Tilford recovering after the ball went over his head. Threw the ball all the way to third, and out at third. There's an argument by Laris, but he is out. That's the first out of the inning. Meanwhile, Andre Alejandro Ruales gets a double, and he comes off the field triumphantly. It's 3-2 to two now. Lamar consolidated on top with that go-ahead run. And you got Tylen Hill coming out to run for Ruales at second base. So after Hightower ties up the game, there is more work to do. And unfortunately... For their starting pitcher, Braylon Kizzy, that run is charged to him. Now Jonathan Anders, left-handed hitter, looks at a breaking ball down and in. Anders was 0 for 2, but did walk when he was facing Kizzy. Now he's looking at Contu. The right-hander looks back at second. Another breaking ball, and that's way upstairs. Two and nothing. Our temperature has dropped to 61. It feels a little chillier than that. 2-0 pitch just misses the outside corner. Anders, you can bet, is going to be taken all the way here on 3-0. Uh, maybe not. Just kind of depends on how much confidence Coach Boudouin has in him. The lefty digs in and looks at the pitch, and I believe that's high for ball four. It is. And a throw down by Starnes to try and get Hill wandering off second. Didn't amount to anything. So now it's Colin Garza. Had an RBI double in the third. He's one for three. Three to two, our score. Lamar Consolidated has scratched out a run, and they still have something going. We're runners at first and second and one out. Garza steps out. Now that they have the lead, you're getting a lot of noise out of the Mustangs dugout as they try to rattle Cantu. Cantu to Garza, breaking ball swung on and missed. A beauty of a hook there. Zion Johnson would be due, but it's somebody else in the on-deck circle as a curveball misses away. Count one and one on Garza. And now Starnes asks for time, and he's going to go out and talk to his pitcher, Cantu. We won't have any baseball broadcasts or softball broadcasts tomorrow night, but on Friday night, it is Dulles against Elkins. 6.40 for the batter up show. And now a turnaround and a throw back towards second. And Tylen Hill is back in safely. Garza ready. Contu comes set, brings it. Breaking ball is high. Let's go, Colin. Let's go, back. Garza crosses himself before he steps back into the box. And now too much time taken, and Garza asked to step out. Two and one the count on Garza. Let's go, 
The Mustangs have taken a 3-2 lead here in the top of the seventh. They're looking for more. Garza swings and probably swung at a pitch that would have been a ball, and he fouled it back over the screen behind us. Hope you're enjoying our broadcast on VibeFortBend.com. Here's the 2-2. Curveball sure looked good. And every infielder for Hightower is making a gesture of incredulity. And for those of you in Rio Linda, that means they can't believe that wasn't strike three. And the most miffed of them all is Cantu. That looked like a beauty. And it's three and two. Still one out, runners first and second. Cantu, can he gather himself? There's a swinging strikeout. So that's the second out. Still those runners at first and second, and now Zion Johnson is due, but it won't be him. The hitter for Lamar is Philip Salinas, the guy who went into right field when the Mustangs made that pitching change. Very important here for Contu. Don't let any more runs cross. He comes set and brings it to Salinas. The curveball is high, truly. Hightower really needs this one. You don't want to get swept by Lamar Consolidated. If you lose two to them, that's just tough. They have already uh, split with Angleton, played two games against them, and they've only played Willow Ridge. Well, let's see. They, they beat Willow Ridge twice, split with Angleton, trying to get a split with Lamar Consolidated. And now the ball slips out of Starnes' mitt and the runners will move up. It was a pitch high and away. That's a real tough one as to whether you make it a wild pitch or a passed ball. Man, that's tough. I'm not even going to tell you what I think because I'm not the official scorer. Two runners in scoring position now. As Salinas digs in, 2-0 the count. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Starnes keeps it in front. He chased one in the dirt, he being Salinas. Two and one the count. Outfield straight away for Salinas. Pitch on the way. And that is in the dirt, but this time he doesn't chase and it's three and one. Javon Thompson, who's 0 for 3, would be next. So you might guess here that Contu wants to make a perfect pitch, but he doesn't want to spike one that gets past his catcher. That would make it 4 to 2. Here's the 3-1. In there for a strike at the knees. Brought the fastball. Salinas ready for the 3-2. Runners at second and third, so they won't be on the move. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball in there. Called strike three. Salinas has the nerve to argue. Well, Lamar consolidated, pushes the go-ahead run across. However, they strand runners at second and third. Hightower will come up down by a run in the bottom of the seventh, and they will bring up Penson, Payne, and Starnes. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? 
Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 331.22. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X by gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Left-hander Jonathan Anders came on in relief. Came out of right field, and now he's in a position to be the winning pitcher as his Lamar Consolidated teammates have pushed across a run in the top of the seventh, and they lead Hightower 3-2. to two. K.J. Penson, Jeremy Payne, and Richard Starnes are due. You couldn't have any three better Hightower hitters. But Anders was tough on them. In getting the win Friday night when he threw 114 pitches and now he is on to try and finish off a victory for himself. Penson ready. Looks at the first pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Penson has struck out. Walked and then stole second and third. Also walked again. Here's the 0-1 from Anders. In there for a strike and frustration on the part of Penson. He bangs his bat on the ground. He thinks that pitch was low. Nothing and two to KJ. Anders taking his time, gets the sign he wants, begins his windup. Here comes the 0-2, and it's fouled back. Nice spoil on the part of Penson. Nobody has left this ball game. Anders, who's been given permission, permission to do so by the home plate umpire, kind of licking the fingers on this cool night. Rocks and brings another 0-2. Yeah. Called strike three, and down goes Penson. Penson can't believe it. And Jeremy Payne will come up with one out. And I don't know if you can hear the complaint of some high tower dad saying the catcher basically stands up before the curveball pitch gets to the plate. That obstructs the umpire's view, but he goes ahead and calls it calls it a strike, even though it looked like it was high. Oh, the politics of high school baseball. Anything can happen though. One out, base is empty, and now Jeremy Payne. Two walks in the game and a strikeout. Anders started to go into his windup, but he stepped out. Now Payne, one foot out. Now we, here we go. That's upstairs for a ball. A long ball would be nice. But in this cool air, it's not really conducive to it. Foul ball out of play. I think maybe Payne thought he had a pitch to drive. A couple of kids scrambling out of the aluminum bleachers to run find that foul ball. One and one the count on Payne. Rest the bat on his shoulder. Anders rocks and fires. Swung on and missed. It's one and two. Payne does have a homer, just in case you're wondering. 
Anders brings the one two. Swung on and missed. And the catcher couldn't handle it clearly. Out at first on the throw down by Ruales. That was close, very close. It's a swinging strikeout for the second out. The bases are empty and now it is Starnes. Ruales, the catcher, was kind of taking his time and then he threw over to Laris who did not have his foot on the bag. He had to, had to kind of catch the ball and then stab at the bag with his foot. And in the umpire's judgment, he got the foot on the bag before Payne got there. Now it's Starnes. 0 for 3. He could make everybody forget about that right here. And he looks at a curveball down and away. Starnes hitting 454 in district games coming in. Now he steps out. Just got to get on somehow, some way. Amir Sabahi waiting. Here's the 1 0. Swung on and missed. He was trying to tie this thing up with one big swing right there, and it's one and one. Anders looking over the top of, of his glove. Shakes off a sign, gets the one he wants. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. That is hit towards second base. Scooped up by Garza. Throws on to first to Laris, and that will do it. Anders comes on with clutch pitching and some generous strike zone. And 1-2-3 go the Hurricanes in the bottom of the seventh. And the final score is 3-2. Lamar Consolidated wins. We'll take a break and bring you the totals right after this on VipeFortBend.com. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Ooh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet 50 megabits per second for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and you could save hundreds a year on wireless. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 33122. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares optimized pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. First Tire and Auto celebrates spring with the big tire sale. It is big, big, big. Buy three tires and get one free. The rubber hits the road with great savings for all the high school sports fans as we cheer on all student athletes. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Become a Vibe Insider today. Access breaking news in high school sports. Enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos, documentaries on programs in your area. It's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan. If you go for the yearly plan, it rounds out to just $1.99 a month. It costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe 
news throughout the entire year. Subscribe today. What are you waiting for? It's less than a cup of coffee a month. Become a Vibe Insider. $2.99 a month, $23.99 for the whole year. Hey, it's Vibe. We will see you at the games. We're back, and it was one of those gritty high school baseball games close all the way. And the Lamar Consolidated Mustangs come away with a win, three to two over Hightower. Hightower drops to three and three in their district games for Lamar Consolidated. Three runs on six hits. They made one error and left ten men on base. So throughout the game, Braylon Kizzy really pitched out of trouble very well many times. And his teammates tied it up, but when he came out and started the seventh, he allowed a couple of base runners. One of them scored the go-ahead run that was eventually the winning run. And so Hightower falls. They get two runs on four hits. They made three errors and had eight runners left on base. The winning pitcher coming in in relief is Anders for Lamar Consolidated in Kizzy. Pitched very well, deserves better, but he ends up getting the loss for Hightower. So for everybody on the VipeFortBend.com team, we thank you so much for being with us. Again, our final score, Lamar Consolidated 3 and Hightower 2. And we will rejoin you on Friday night at 640 for the Batter Up Show as we bring you Dulles versus Elkins on your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. I want to thank my wonderful producer, Shane Sholwinski, back at the mothership, Vipe World Headquarters. It's not easy to find someone who is willing to not only do the job, but do a great job on Wednesday night. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Merle Bertrand, Suna Venkat, Bob McKay, and everybody else on the team. Again, our final score, 3-2. to two. Congratulations, Mustangs. You fought through a tough game and won. We will talk to you on Friday night. Good night, everybody, and God bless.